Hello, 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 you all. Welcome to All Together Now, Tramshit's free arts program on YouTube Live. I'm Kenny, and I'm so, so excited to be cooking with you in our session called Kitchen Crafts today. We will be making samosas, but our own versions of it. So not, not two of us maybe might be making the same thing. The session will be approximately an hour long. Um, and you can join in as much or as little as you can, as you want. Um, happy Easter, everyone. So if you have the time in the afternoon, come to the kitchen, join, escape the loud noises, escape all of it just for one hour and join in. Meanwhile, to get the most out of the session today, please choose live chat rather than the top chat in the chat function. This way you can chat to us and other people joining in the session today. So without any further delay, let's, let's begin. Um, so if you're not already in there, please come to your kitchen, take a look around and settle yourself in. Become aware of where you're standing. Is it too close to the shelves? Oh, is your head about to hit the exhaust fan, just like mine? Or maybe near the counter? Where are your hands? Where is your hob? Where do your feet touch the ground? Take a couple of deep breaths, slow down, and bring attention to your body, taking space in this kitchen where you're standing. For just one hour, leave all your work, your anxieties, your little worries, maybe outside of the kitchen door, just for an hour and come. Let's, let's bring some attention to our taste, smell, vision, touch and hearing. Before we begin though, we must acknowledge why are we cooking? What do we want to experience? Ask yourself, what flavor are you craving for today? I mean, it's Easter, so I'm assuming that a lot of us have already had way too much chocolate, but still have a sweet tooth. So it's sweet, maybe something spicy, maybe savory, rich, something cheesy, mm, maybe a mix of several of those. Set the intention of fulfilling that craving today through this session. So, why am I making samosas? In all, if, if in most of the cultures, if not all, we have some kind of a pastry made with some of the fillings inside. In China, you have dumplings. In Japan, you have gyoza. In India, you have samosas. You have kachori. You have sausage rolls here, um, Cornish pasties, Argentinian empanadas. The list goes on. Essentially, this is a very, very common very common form of a dish, a snack, basically. And everyone loves them, let's face it. Who doesn't want a hot, hot dumpling in the evening? So in this COVID times, we've suffered a huge loss of not being able to cook together, of not being able to share food with each other on the same table, eat and eat in the same place. So maybe today we can experience that. Maybe in this whole wide range of several people joining us from Southeast London, from maybe other countries. I know some of my friends will be joining, I hope so, from India. So loads of people joining in today, the whole of Tramshed community. So you can, today we are going to cook together. Nonetheless, we still bring our own flavors to it. So let's begin. To make the pastry, first of all, we must begin with the dough. So the basic ingredients for the dough are flour, salt, oil, ghee, butter, any kind of fat that you're comfortable with that you have in your kitchen, water. And if you're making sweet pastries today, if you're making sweet samosas today, uh, grab a little bit of sugar and whatever else you have in the kitchen. Be mindful as you go and hunt for all the ingredients. Look at, oh, does that pick your interest? Bring it along. You can make use of it some way or the other. Maybe the filling will match it down now. So bring it along. 
here I have my flower. And now let's get our hands in. So for the basic dough, of course, you can feel free to make any changes that you feel are necessary. Let your instincts and intuition guide you through it, throughout this process. So we will begin by adding the basic ingredients to the dough. First is salt. You need it. Oh, okay. We have a first question. Do you normally make it sweet or savory, Kenny? Oh, that's actually a fantastic way to tell you that usually because I am, I come from a family which prefers the savory, we usually have really spicy samosas. But otherwise, during especially during this month, um, when we celebrate the festival of Holi, um, a lot of families of diff in different parts of the country, we actually make very sweet samosas. They're very, very sweet. They're also called gujias. So go and try some if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, I usually make them savory. I actually like to experiment with different combinations like mushroom cheese and spinach. That makes a beautiful filling. So if that's what you're craving today, go for it. Anyway, salt. Little bit of oil. So like the regular pastry that you make, where you are rubbing butter or any kind of fat in with the flour. Okay, oh, how many, how much dough? How many does the dough make? So I'm beginning with maybe like one third cup of flour here, and this will make around five, four to five small samosas. Um, you can go with more if you want to make for a big batch, make, make, a big batch. The good thing is you can even store them in the fridge after filling them in and you can use them up to maybe three to four days. So it's all good. Yeah, just just a tiny bit of um, oil or any kind of melted fat that you have. Right. Now that we have that, let's just rub it in together. Feel the texture on your fingers. How does it feel? Does it annoy you? Sit with it. A couple of minutes maybe. Is it really fine? Is there some, are you using whole wheat flour? Is there a nuttiness to it? Are there bigger grains? How does the oil change the texture of the flour? Okay, if you are making sweet pastry, add a bit of sugar to this and you can also add flavoring. So since I'm making a traditional Punjabi samosa, which is like the really spicy one with potatoes and peas, I am adding something called ajwain. I have no idea what it's called in English. Um, so this is from Waitrose, so you can easily find it clearly, even with the Hindi name. Um, but this has a beautiful flavor, so I'm just going to open it. Oh, if I can, that is. Oh, it has a very strong fennel-like flavor, so it's fresh, um, but it also has like an earthiness to it. So just a, just a few seeds. You can, if you're making sweet ones, honestly, you can even add cinnamon, uh, maybe a little bit of nutmeg, maybe a co bit of cocoa powder. Make sure to balance the cocoa powder with sugar, otherwise it might go wrong. But that's all fine. So yeah, the dough is nicely flavored. You can even add a bit of garlic powder if you're planning to make pizza pastries, if that's something. <laughs> Um, maybe mixed herbs, go for it. Try out, feel free to experiment. Dried basil, dried mint. See what it feels like. Now, the one thing that we want to make sure is the pastry comes out nice and crispy at the end, which is why we added the oil, of course. But we also need to make sure that our dough is rather stiff. So be careful when adding the water. There is no exact amount. It really, really depends on the type of dough that you're using. 
the part of the country, the world you're in, because dough honestly differs from literally within a few kilometers of where you are. So get your hands in and start kneading it. This is not your typical pastry dough, so don't be afraid to knead it. Does it feel annoying a little, getting your hands dirty? I find it rather nice, actually. I love listening to the sound of the dough scraping against the sides of the bowl, which is why I never play music in the kitchen. The amount of water, again, is purely by instinct here. It's okay if it goes a little bit over, there's always the room to add a little bit more flour. So don't worry, just go with your gut instinct. Just make sure that by the end of it, you have a stiff, stiff dough. You'll know when to stop, trust me. When I was younger and I was trying to learn cooking from my mom and my grandmother i would always ask mom please tell me the exact amount of flour how exact amount of salt how much to put in and she'd be like oh you'll know you'll just you'll just know how to do it i would get furious and leave the kitchen i was like no i don't want to learn anymore and that was that but over time no it should not be sorry someone just asked a question should it be sticky and wet no it won't be this is I am going to knead it properly just so it absorbs all the water. Mine is still crumbly. Do I need more oil? Um, I won't know, honestly. Um, if you, if it's still crumbly, maybe you have not added enough water. Um, try that. Maybe add a little bit of more, more oil if you want it to be a little bit more crisp and uh, buttery. But yeah, go with your instincts. I'm going to add a tiny bit more flour. The more you work your dough, the more water it starts to absorb, at least in my case here, um, might work for you that way. But make sure you're actually incorporating all the dough, all the flour with the water that is in there. Yeah, now it's perfect. It's not sticky. It holds its shape. And it's still stiff. So you have to put some pressure and it still bounces back a little. Remember, if you still do not enjoy the whole kneading process, you can at least begin with a fork. You can begin with a wooden spoon, a fork that will help you ease into it. You don't have to like everything. Okay, so now that this is done, I'm just going to you can see the consistency of the dough here. The good thing about this small quantity about, of dough is that if this is the first time you're trying it, you're not wasting a lot of ingredients if, if it goes wrong. Or you can make it only for yourself. You don't have to share it with anyone. Now I'm just going to cover it with another bowl and let it sit for like maybe 10, 15 minutes. You can also use a wet cloth to cover it and just make sure that uh, it's not getting dry. Um, yeah, otherwise we will have trouble with rolling it. Um, someone's asked, what type of flour are you using? I am here using plain flour, um, but you can use a little bit, which is um, whole wheat, which has a bit of whole wheat mixed. But if you want that crisp texture on the outside, make sure that there is plain flour in there. 
Okay. Right. Our next next task is going to be to prepare the fiddle. Now, if you're not already in there, go to your pantry. Remember what we started with? We started with what filling, what flavor are we setting our intention to of fill fully? Ugh, of fulfilling today. What do you want to eat? Something cheesy? I would totally go with the idea of mushroom, cheese, and spinach, or pizza rolls, for instance, or maybe even something like cauliflower and cheese. Leftovers? Easter? That's an idea. Um, <laughs> anyway, so that is that. You can do that. Go to your pantry, go where your ingredients are, open your fridge, see what you have. Apple pie filling, coconut filling, chocolate filling. Honestly, simply wrap a bar of chocolate in this dough and just fry it. It works, I promise. I am going to be making a traditional potato filling. So you can join me with that or, and learn me basically making how to make a samosa, um, or you can simply follow your own method. You can simply follow your own, um, whatever you have in the house. Trust me, you really don't need a fixed recipe for this. You can go with any type of filling you desire. Okay, so the list of ingredients for the samosa filling are here then. But boiled potatoes and boiled peas. Um, which I have already prepared because I would not have the time otherwise to teach you how to make, um, well, not teach you actually, just to guide you how to make um, the pastry and the folding it. Um, you will need cumin seeds, garam masala, chilies or chili powder, um, armchur, which is dried mango powder, by the way. I am also using hing, which is a very, for such a short word in Hindi, there's actually a very complicated English word, asafetida. I have no idea why it's called so much that, but it has a very strong garlicky, oniony flavor and is actually very good for your tummy and any digestive issues you have. So go ahead at that. Um, dried mango powder, which is the armchur. You can replace it with lemon juice, um, dried mint, omit if you don't like it or add coriander if it doesn't taste like soap to you, um, chaat masala, which is essentially a very interesting mix of spices, um, which makes it very, a very well, I call it chatpata, which is basically a burst of um, flavors in your mouth, spicy, sweet, sour. That's what we, how we describe chaat in India. Oh, someone has just said that they are doing sunray tomatoes, feta, spinach, and leek. Oh my God, sun-dried tomatoes are my absolute favorite ingredient. Honestly, that sounds delicious. And Charlotte says that they've put a little cinnamon in, my, in their dough to make apple ones. I love that idea. Apple pie goes so well with the dough, with any form of dough. I've done this before and I replaced sugar with jaggery, which is like an Indian, an Indian kind of sugar. And it just added that extra level of depth and literally transformed apple pie. So yeah, play around. Anyway, let's start with making our filling. So I'm just going to shift this. Take a pan on the hob, add a tiny bit of oil, of course, after switching it on. Just a tiny bit of oil. Also, someone in the previous one said, uh, someone previously said to me, why don't you make two types of samosas? Now I can't hear, but honestly divide your dough and make it into different fillings. 
That is so cool. That is such a good idea. Someone gave it to me and it was fantastic. Okay. Now. Add a tiny bit of cumin seeds. Now make sure that you listen to the sizzle of this. That is the beauty. As the cumin fries, you get a beautiful aroma and the color slowly changes and you hear this beautiful sizzling. That's when you know how, when to put the next ingredient in. I'm going to add the hing with this. And then add the peas and potatoes. Enjoy the sizzle. The taste, the turning smell, the, the changing colors. Again, it's a very small portion. Which oil am I using? I'm using any sunflower, vegetable oil, any oil that you think goes with the flavor. You can add butter, you can add olive oil, anything works, whichever one you have in the house. If you're making samosas with me, just make sure that as you start cooking them, you start mashing the potatoes just a tiny bit. You can also make meat samosas, by the way, if you're wondering. And there's also a random thing that we do in India. We add noodles to it. Don't ask me why, it tastes delicious. Um, we just cook noodles in soy sauce and um, some chili sauce and with veggies and we stuff it inside the pastry and we fry it. That's our evening snack. Um, but yeah, it's delicious. So no, who's complaining? So yeah, go ahead. There's a load of options. Now I will add just a tiny bit, just because I want some color. You, this wasn't even an, on the ingredient list, so you don't have to. Just a tiny bit of turmeric. Oh, the cumin seeds smell amazing here. What about you? What are the smells that you can you can identify? Is the is the look of the dish changing somehow? Charlotte, are your apples getting softer? Is the meat changing? Are the juices leaking out? How's it changing? How can you tell when it's done? I bet it always smells amazing in your house. Oh, that's very kind. How have you always loved cooking? Well, no, the first time I learned it, it was only out of necessity. I learned it in 10th grade. I was like, mom, I know I want to go to the UK and study. Um, and as an international student, you have to know cooking. Um, so I joined this cooking class because I could not deal with my mom not giving me exact recipe amounts. So I joined a cooking class and that's how I got into it. But then I entered baking and baking really helped me. It was so therapeutic. It really brought all your attention to all the senses. It's a beautiful, beautiful activity. 
So yeah, if you haven't tried that yet, it it really helps. And um, but that's how I actually started my own home bakery, which ran for nine months when I was on a gap year from university. And yeah, since then I've been teaching workshops and cooking loads of food. Okay, last couple of things to add to our filling. This is a bit of garam masala, which is basically a blend of spices. Now I'm going to just a tiny bit be critical of Mr. Jamie Oliver, who says that this is a street spice. It's not, I'm really sorry, but every house has a different garam masala. Um, every house makes their own. Every house has a different flavor, different recipe. So even if the name remains common garam masala, it changes from household to household. The smell changes, the taste of the food changes, even if you decide that the recipe is the same. It never is. Okay, the last bit is a bit of chaat masala. What's your favorite dish to cook other than these? Oh, okay. Well, I love cooking lentils. I do love making my mom's dal, but I, of course, I can never get it to be the same as her, hers. And I do love, despite the fact that I am actually Sindhi, which is one of the communities which kind of border Pakistan and India both. Um, I do love Gujarati food, which is where I live. So, yeah. Charlotte says, I think my apples have slightly crisped up, but they smell great. You know what? That's actually great. That means that when they fry, they won't overcook. So that's great, Charlotte. But yeah, as I was saying, um, <laughs> so because I love Gujarati food, just a few days ago, I was with my aunt in Wales because she was due to getting her vaccination. And um, my mom sent a parcel for the both of us. And she basically vacuum packed all the Gujarati snacks and sent them to me because she knows how much I love them. Right. This is the last thing that I'm adding. This is a bit of dried mint. So I'm just going to put this in. I'm avoiding cooking it because that's how this, the minty smells floats up. Oh, this smells divine, people. I hope you're getting all the aromas, all the little messes that you're making. It's completely fine. There's my turmeric. Don't worry about it. And guess what? Our filling is ready. Now, all that we need to do is let it cool for a bit, just a tiny bit until it is ready to go into our dough. Are you enjoying this session? If you are, please, please consider sending some maybe feedback sessions to us. There's also a form that you can fill in. Um, you can get in touch via email if you wanna send a direct feedback. It's info at tramshed.org or on social media, Instagram, Facebook, links will be put up in the chat. Um, you can also fill up the monitoring form, um, which will also take only a couple of minutes. This link will also be put up in the chat. I hope it already is, or maybe it'll be put up later. Um, but yes, majority of the Tramshed programs are free by the way, so feel free to access. This is a beautiful space to build community. I'm doing this session today essentially because of that, because I have missed cooking for others. When the lockdown first began, I made coconut ladoos, um, just coconut balls, and dropped them to my friend's house. Um, and with, with like this sweet letter. And she loved it. She said that it made her day. It was so weird because we were all students finishing up our undergrad. And um, she just said this, this really feels like home again. So 
there's always opportunity with food to make community. Even now, all of you across the world are cooking together, even though it's from your own ingredients, you join by this one activity that you're doing. Even if it's, its flavors differ, that means that all of you can enjoy it, even though you're cooking separately. So there is beauty, that is, that, that's the beautiful work that Tramsha, Tramsha does. So continue watching these. There'll be another one on Tuesday and Sunday. Um, so you can catch them up there. Meanwhile, let's bring back our little dough. So as you can see, its elasticity has changed. This has become a lot looser than I would have liked it to. So I'm just going to add maybe a pinch of flour. I need it again. There's a reason people say that bread and kneading, making bread, kneading really solves your anger <laughs> because it really does. You're literally taking it out all of it and you're still making something. You're still making something beautiful out of it. Something that tastes good. Something that fills your tummy. It's always, always a good idea to do that. Right. Meanwhile, while we are doing this, let's put our pan on fire. Medium heat for now? Yeah, medium heat for now. And we will start heating our oil for deep frying into it. Think I should have added potato as your filling seems to be sticking together better than mine. Doesn't matter, honestly, I said noodles, right? And noodles don't necessarily stick together. So your filling can really, really work. Just give it a shot. Now, meanwhile, I am starting to prepare a little filling, dough filling um, shapes, I think, shapes. We'll go with that. Okay, because these things are, uh, these pastries are deep fried, make sure that you add enough oil to submerge um, your samosa or your Cornish pasty or your sausage roll or your apple pie. I'm going to dunk this. This is how we make rotis in India, by the way. So I'm just going to dunk it in a little bit of flour. And start doing this. Doesn't have to be circular. Doesn't have to be any shape. Just try making it a circle if that's easier for you. If it's not, perfectly fine. I am trying to make a triangular samosa, which is the traditional way that we make it. So just give it a shot. If it works, it works. Even mine is not perfect, clearly. My mom still taunts me that I make, um, you know, I make rotis the shape of India's flag, um, not flag, sorry, the map of India. So, you know, anything works. What can I use if I don't have a rolling pin? Um, well, a couple of months ago, I didn't have one either. So I would just use um, something like an empty glass bottle or maybe something, yeah, an empty glass bottle often works, something that is cylindrical, anything that can really just roll around, anything works. 
Make sure that your pastry is thin, but not so thin that you fill anything and it oozes out. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this to make two semicircular-ish pieces. Now we'll also need a little bit of water. So this is how we make triangular samosas. We take it, fold it in the middle. That's, and then we dip our fingers in the water and we rub it along the edges. Now, seal the other one over the top. Pinch it together. And you have a nice little open cone. This is where the filling comes in. The filling goes inside. Meanwhile, if you have questions, please pop them in the live chat. If you are unable to make a circular roti, you can use something to cut a circle out of. If that's not your game either, make a square, um, make a pastry that is square shaped, make maybe the hand pies, which are like semicircular, so you just fold it and seal it, anything. I'm just going to rub more water on this edge and seal it. If you can hear some laughter in the background here, there are kids playing outside in the playground. It's a beautiful Easter day, guys. Take it all in. That's also a part of the cooking experience here because that's a voice in the kitchen. That's a noise in the kitchen. And that is our first samosa ready. Not perfect, but it's mine. And it tastes good. I hope so. So I'll let it be. Mine are definitely not as unique as yours. That's okay, Charlotte, that's perfectly okay. Honestly, mine, mine are still not neat. If I show these to my mom or my grandmother, she'll be like, oh, what have you done? What dastardly act have you done to these samosas? So you are perfectly fine. Mine look more like fat dumplings. Well, there's a reason that making dumplings is an art, right? So go with it. That looks better, I think, than the previous one. So now, should before we begin frying, let's prepare a plate and cover it with a paper towel. And that's the last bit of it. That will just help you absorb all the excess oil that drips off of your beautiful fried creations. Okay. 
Okay, now to test if your oil is hot enough, pinch just a tiny bit of dough, that's enough, and put it in the oil. If it sizzles and floats up immediately, it's still taking a tiny bit of time, it's ready to fry. Okay, before that, I'm going to grab this because this is the only thing I'm a student, people. Please forgive me. This is the only thing I have here for frying. This is usually used for serving noodles. Okay, the oil is good to go. Put your first samosa in. Be careful if children are watching this video, please, please be mindful of using hot oil. especially for frying, put that, put the samosa in very gently. You'll see the color of the dough changing. You'll see, you'll maybe smell the beautiful apples and the cinnamon frying, or maybe the potatoes, the spicy, the chili powder that's coming out now. Observe all of it. Observe how the bubbles kind of form on the dough, around the dough. Take it all in. That's part of it. Keep frying it on medium. Remember, this activity is also available if you do not, if you know someone who has no access to internet, or if you want to continue this activity, um, even after the live session is over, um, you can rewatch this video. And there's also an, what do we call it? There's an activity sheet that can be sent out. So I'm sure you can email um, Tramshed community info at Tramshed and they will be happy to provide you with an activity sheet as well. Oh no, someone says they've, their theirs have exploded. Oh, I'm so sorry. But honestly, that just means that you need to seal it better. If you've only put in one, my suggestion is go back to the dough, maybe fill, maybe put a little less filling. Um, yeah, and then seal it really tightly. Make sure that the, it, it, it has the capacity to hold. Maybe the dough is a little, needs a little more flour. There can be many things that can be done. Explore them. That's also a part of cooking. That's, that's the part of instinct. May, those mistakes are also a part of learning how to trust your instincts, how to navigate them. Um, uh, Lauren's asking, does the oil have to cover it completely? More or less, um, it must be submerged so, so that it can actually get a beautiful deep golden brown color. May take a little bit for the first samosa. Don't give up. Don't get nervous. Take another deep breath if you feel like, oh my God, am I doing too much? Am I doing too little? What if it's the wrong color? Slow down, notice the color. It should get a beautiful deep golden brown. Let it go, honestly, it'll be fine. And that is the reason that you have more samosa than more dough. You can always make a tweak. You can always change how it looks. You can always change the consistency.
How often do I make these? Charlotte is asking. They're very quick and easy to make as a snack. They are, aren't they? Well, for practice, I made this just day before yesterday um, for my aunt when I was still in Wales. And she got so emotional, <laughs> she started crying. Um, and they turned out really well. I don't make these very often because, um, well, I can't be bothered with the hassle of so much oil being used. But it's if it's a special occasion like Diwali or if it's Christmas and I'm feeding some friends, I often make these because these are quick and everyone loves them. But yes, if you want to feed your kids who have just come from school tired, this is a great snack. Oh, Charlotte's already moved ahead. Do you dip them in anything? I do. Um, my mom sent a parcel to me a couple of days ago, which I told you about, and she also sent some chutneys. So you or you can, which I will tell you later. Um, we dip them in sauces, in chutney. Some people like it with ketchup, um, which is also um, a great option with this. Then we have the traditional mint chutney, which we make at home. Uh, mint and coriander chutney. You can eat it with a mango chutney. Um, anything. We also actually eat it as a chaat. So we put chana masala on top of it, dress it with some fried, how, what would I call it? It's called sape. I don't have a word for it, but it's basically fried chickpea flour um, in very thin strands of it. Um, some yogurt, whipped yogurt, and some mint chutney, some tamarind chutney, and that's an entire meal in itself. So if that floats your boat, that's an idea for you. You miss eating with people? Because I do, I definitely miss eating with my friends. I absolutely loved it when uh, we would go to a restaurant, order several things and just share. Or even just like, we used to love doing um, home dinners. So every kind of weekend, we would meet up at someone's place and do a potluck. And it was the best thing. So this is somehow a kind of compensation. It's actually not a compensation because you still are eating and sharing the same dish with so many people around the world. And there's still joy in it. Apple and cinnamon dipped in cold custard. Now that sounds amazing. Ice cream, go down that route as well. Oh my God, that is such a fantastic idea. So Charlotte suggested this by the way. And this is the deep golden brown color that we're looking for. Oof, it's hot, it's nice and hot. And see that, that's our first creation, a proper samosa. Be careful, it'll be hot. But you know what? Admire it. You just made something from scratch. Something that you thought was incredibly difficult, maybe, but now you've done it. You've, you've actually invented something, you know that? You don't have to call it a samosa. That's the beauty of it. Sometimes you're too worried Oh, I'm making something, but it's not exactly following the traditional recipe. Well, then he's making something that's your own. Acknowledge that it has a root somewhere, but make a name for it. Go and give your dish a name. Call it something your own. And do you also get annoyed when you see these hyper fancy photographs on Instagram of every food picture? If yes, then you're not alone. It really makes you feel like, oh my God, people are cooking such amazing dishes. Oh, you have no idea what goes behind the scenes. So 
or actually you are the ones who do the fails that happen behind the scenes the 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 mistakes that we make while cooking if you're having a bad day we might end up forgetting to put salt in maybe forgetting to just like one happened maybe our dough is too wet maybe not noticing when something gets burned so it's okay honestly you don't have to make instagram worthy food everything is instagram worthy this is what real home food looks like it's not always picturesque but that is yours So folks, we actually did it. We have our samosas ready in front of us. There is perfection and imperfection, Charlotte. You're so, so correct. It, there is, that is where the creation shows. There is a bubble here, but that's where it shows this is made from hand. This is made by my hand. This is made by the things that I've learned from my mother when she was cooking. Oh my God, I am admiring this. If you have made it with me, whenever you make it by yourself, decorate it for yourself. If it floats your boat, make it like this. If, if you find that you have several of them, you can layer them with something, decorate them with toppings, with sauces. Oh, amazing. Lauren says the second one of her samosas did not explode. That is fantastic. So there you go. We can learn while we're cooking. And we can follow our instincts and our instincts will be right. Trust them. So after we've done this, admire it. Honestly, look at the color. From this, from this, we've actually managed to make these beautiful golden deep fried samosas. And you can smell how good they taste. You can all, you can actually tell you can, you can see how the texture has changed. It's now crisp on the outside, it holds its shape as opposed to what we were having, the, the finicky thing that we had before, the dough, the softness of this dough has turned into these crisp samosas. The aromas are now actually filling the kitchen completely. I wonder whether my cat will running, come running in. Oh, you made something. It's an emosa. Oh, Emily, that's a fantastic pun. I have to give it to you. That is a fantastic pun. Emosa. I like that. So wonderful people, if you followed along, you have actually created something of your own. You acknowledge what you were craving. You've, you're fulfilling that craving. Acknowledging what your body is asking for you. You fulfilled it. You did it. I hope you do feel proud about what you've done today. This is an incredible achievement. Cooking a meal for yourself, for others, for your neighbors, sharing it with them, with yourself, with your body is an achievement, honestly. Take out some dip, take out some sauces. I'm going to have it with mine with some green chutney and some mango, mango pickles. Share it with a loved one, a neighbor. Simply enjoy it by yourself, honestly. Take heed of your achievement today. Acknowledge that you created something that is your own in this process. Taste it. What, is it hot? Is it good? Does it lack something? Would you change something the next time you make these? Would you have fun with other types of fillings? I know that I am going to do it. I might be making some um, soy mince samosas next time, I think. What did the cooking process feel like? Did you enjoy it? Answer these questions. Send in your photographs of the food that you made with us today. Send in some experiences, send in feedback for all of this. You can also catch up with us. You can share this video. Um, there will be an activity sheet that can be sent via email or phone. Share all of your creations, tag us on Instagram, Facebook. And please, I hope you had a lovely, lovely time with us today. Join in for next week. There's loads and loads of fun, more, more fun sessions to come. Have a lovely, lovely day and lovely Easter Monday. Bye, you all.